Crying. What's going on, Sister Anita? I see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're listening to For Your Glory by Tasha Cobb. Tasha Cobb. Tasha Cobb. Tasha Cobb Leonard. Tasha Cobb Leonard. Yeah, that's it. She got her man. For your glory. Yeah. I will do anything. What's going on, Sister Cam? See you. What's going Good on, morning. Laura? Good morning. Good morning, Miss Rosa. How you doing? Morning. How you doing, Miss Elise? Good morning. Everybody, a few moments to get in, a few, few seconds to get in. What's going on, friend? To be where you are across the highest things, I'll travel near. What's going on, Peaches? Welcome to the 40 Club. A lot of birthdays this month. Yeah. A lot of birthdays. Brother Brian's birthday today. Oh, John's birthday today. Happy birthday, John. What's going on, Miss Josephine, Brother Nathaniel? How you doing? Glory. I will do anything just to see. What's up, Cheryl? Good morning. To behold you as my king. For your glory. Love this song. Love this song. Good morning. What's going on, Pastor Davis? See you. I see you. Just to see you. To behold you at my feet. I'm going to tell you who I like. I like this song. But you know how I, mm -hmm. Hey, what's going on, Mary? You know who I like? You know who my favorite person oh. that sang this song or anybody ever sung this song? Now, I don't want everybody to think I'm biased. How boy? No. Oh, Couture Walker, my daughter. Oh, she, 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 she killed, she killed, it. She killed, she killed it. it. She yeah. killed this man. She killed this dog. I don't care what nobody said. That that was like the, I ain't being biased, y'all. But she my kid. <laughs> but yeah, she killed that that Sunday, yeah, man. I know she saw it. Man. And it's funny with me. I like a lot of gospel songs sometimes better when i hear other people sing it in church and, and it like uh was it a, a more than anything the yeah. first time i ever heard that song was in church and i've been hooked so a lot of songs get you caught up so let's go ahead and get started y'all i want to be where you are amen. amen come on let's give god a hand praise and come on father god lord we thank you uh just for letting us be in your presence father yes, god we god. thank you for this another opportunity another day that we be able to gather and look, hear your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, Jesus. Man, come on, wherever you are, put your hands together. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, God has been good. God yes, has yes. been good. Uh, just a few house cleaning. Uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, we will be at Sycamore Park Elementary School. Uh, hopefully, I don't see no snow in the, in the forecast. Uh, <laughs> but we will be, but next Sunday will be our jersey sunday so represent your favorite football team basketball team baseball team wear whatever jersey you have um uh, i got a couple of jerseys i don't know if i wear my cowboys jersey but i, I just realized I, forget, I don't know if i can still fit it but i got a terrell Owens <laughs> 49ers jersey right? i bought that thing in 2007. Ooh. so <laughs> what's going on a uh, lot i see you uh, so I don't know. I'm a, but I think I'm gonna stick with my Cowboys gear because I want everybody to think I'm switching teams. Right, right, right. Yeah, you can't even you can't even wear another jersey just because right. you like the sports people think you switched out. So uh next week is Jersey Sunday, nine o'clock. 
Uh, we're gonna have a great time. Then we'll, we'll talk about what we're gonna do in February. Uh, I got some ideas what I think I wanna do in February, something that we haven't done in a while uh, since the pandemic started. So uh, I, I'll let y'all know uh, by then. But like I said, we'll let February worry about February. Uh, also, <laughs> you, um, you see Ronnie Lynn, our executive pastor, she has on a Kingdom Character Matters shirt. So we wanna kind of advertise one of the businesses we cover uh, by Lise Vini, uh, Lise Vini, Elisa's Blessings in a Basket. Uh, Creations so, and Designs. Creation and Design. I'm sorry. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. So uh, we got that shirt. This, that's what we rep represent this year. Kingdom Character Matters. Yes. Uh, we're focusing on Kingdom Character. Kingdom Character this year. Uh, so we're going to, uh, what's that say? WFB. I can't see. I ain't my glad. I can't see. So the comments or whatever. Yeah. Ronica could probably read some of them. So uh let's get started. Let's let's kind of get started. Uh so uh last week, the last weeks, so last week going into this, we be, we kind of been in the um uh book of Jonah. The mm -hmm. book of Jonah last week we preached on uh how your disobedience uh inconvenience others, how you can be disobedient and because your, your disobedience affect other people around you. Uh then Tuesday we was in the chat uh, Jonah chapter two, dealing with Jonah and his fish, talking about the situation that he was in an uncomfortable situation. He was being consumed and digested by a fish mm -hmm. uh, to get him to change direction and change course of his life. Sometimes God has to put you in tight situation and, and uncomfortable situations in order to get you to pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, but today we want to kind of lift up chapter three. We're going to lift up chapter three. We're going to go through chapter three as a study uh, so i'm not going to read it first we're going to go through it so if you can turn your bibles to jonah chapter three uh jonah chapter three all right so let's kind of so basically like i said we just gave you an overview of where we at uh when we ended jonah chapter two remember the fish has spit jonah out on the beach on dry land so now uh, Jonah is, is released from his situation, released from uh, uh, his situation. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. Y'all ready to go to work? <laughs> Let's go to work. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so uh, but now we get to chapter three. Uh, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach it to the message that I tell you. Mm -hmm. So Jonah rose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was a seemingly, was a seemingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. So before we really get into chapter three, uh, let's talk about Nineveh. Okay. Can we, let's talk about Nineveh. Let's kind of get a picture on why we're here in the first place, why Jonah mm -hmm. is here in the first place. And one of the reasons, and I'm, I'm going to try to show you the scripture, uh, one of the reasons Nineveh is in this situation is because of generational decisions or neglect. Okay. Decisions that were made in previous generations is why Nineveh is where we are now. Okay. And what we're going to learn from Nineveh in a way is that some of us are in situations or doing things a part of our lives and not realizing the reason why we are, the reason why we act a certain way. It's because of what previous generation, the precedents, the precedent that previous generations have set That's before us. Yeah. Amen. So and to understand about Nineveh, we got to go all the way back to Genesis chapter 10. We got to go back to Genesis chapter 10. So understand at this time, Nineveh was at this time the largest city in the world. Mm -hmm. It was the largest city in the world. It says like it, it's a three days journey to walk through. That's how big it was. Uh, it was it, it was it. It was a city uh, that was built by Nimrod. So let's go to, if you can, turn with me to Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10 real quick. I'm just going to hang out. We're not going to, just give me, you know, we're going we're gonna to put, put some work in today, y'all. Uh, Genesis chapter 10. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see what happened and how we got where we are now. So Genesis chapter 10, if you go to verse 8. Verse, no, excuse me, verse six, Genesis chapter 10, verse six. Now we're talking about the descendants from Noah, the mm -hmm. descendants from Noah. 
So verse 6 says, the sons of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush, the sons of Cush were Seba, Halea, Sabbath, Rama. I can't pronounce this guy's name, I ain't gonna try. The sons of Rama were Sheba and Dedan. Cush begat Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one on the earth. Nimrod was a mighty one. If anybody even read the story or read the history of Nimrod, he was not really a good person. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it said, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the king Lord. Now, listen to this. In the beginning of his kingdom, this is Nimrod, right. who happens to be the son of Cush, who is the son of Ham, who's son of Noah. And in his kingdom, he was, uh, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Y'all remember the story of Babel? Mm -hmm. Uh, Erish, Akkad, Kalna, and the land of Shinar. And from the land he went to Assyria and built Nineveh. So uh, Nimrod, who was the uh, great grandson of Noah, built Nineveh. But if you keep following his sons, uh, his other son, Mizram begot, Ledom, Anamim, Lebed, and Nephitim. But I love this. When you get down to verse 15, Canaan, who was also a son uh, of Ham, Canaan, uh, began setting his first son board, the Jesuit and the Amorites. Y'all see where I'm going with this? Uh, verse 14 talks about the uh, who came, the other land who came, the Philistines. Basically, what what I, all the thing I'm saying is, and with, including Nineveh, mm -hmm. eventually all these territories and things became enemies of Israel. They became enemies of Israel. So Nineveh is an enemy of Israel, okay? Why is that important my generation? Remember, they were, Nimrod was the great-grandson of Noah. Ham, who, who's his, his father, uh, excuse me, his grandfather, uh, you remember the issue between Ham and Noah. Ham was the son of Noah's sons after the flood that exposed his father's nakedness. Mm -hmm. Amen? And Noah cursed him. Right. Noah cursed him. So that is where Nineveh's seed, the seed of where they are was planted, the seed of wickedness. What Ham did was wicked, and that was the seed, amen? And you would think, how can this be the total opposite of what they started? Noah started off as perfect and righteous. He was obedient to God. But now through that generation, because of generations and generations of, of disobedience of ham and how they went down now they're wicked and they're becoming enemies of god mm -hmm. and one thing i want to i want to teach and and, and and really put this point here is that previous generations can set tones positively or negatively in our lives uh for example i give you prime example personally my grandmother or my my mother's my father my paternal grandmother was a pastor for over 20 something years. My mother, uh, her father was a bishop and a pastor for forever. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but I didn't grow up in church. Where was the disconnect? Right. The disconnect was the generation before me, my parents didn't go to church. They were like, hey, we went to church enough as kids and they got older <laughs> and they didn't go to church. They ain't going back. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I believe it's just for, for one of my aunts. I don't think the, all of them really have a consistent, besides my parents now, have a consistent uh, uh, presence in the church. So by the time my parents, my dad and them really started going to church, uh, I think I was about 17 and I didn't go because it wasn't expecting me to go because I worked on Sunday. So, so generations can actually start to grow. And what happens is what we understand our our previous generation sets the tone on how we look at family and marriage. Yeah. Our previous generations can set a tone on how we how we look how we take care of our physical finances. health, finances. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes generations start off good, but because of generation after generation, it can right, it can influence. For example, I, I'm glad Lord says because like for example, we got people that got all kind of mental health issues. Because generationally, we don't we're not we don't go get help. Right. We, we leave it to the it. Lord. We don't talk about it. We <laughs> yeah. give it to the Lord, or or we keep secrets. So, oh, yeah. uh, Nineveh is in a situation now. I just want to kind of be in debt on what's going on with Nineveh is basically the precedence of what happened in their past generations, 
And every time you go generation, things get worse. Some of them better. Uh, let me let me put a point here, and I'm going. So I don't want y'all think I'm picking on the church, but let's talk about this. A lot of the churches, the way they ran, and why they have come so far from God is because of the previous generations that were in that church before. Mm. That's good stuff. Amen. Amen. And that's why you say why people because because generation and what happens is your general the previous generation is going to either help you get closer to God or they're going to help you get further away from God. Yeah. But either way, we set the precedence. Even now, I set a precedence not only for my grandchildren, but I got to set a precedence for my great grandchildren that are not even here. Yeah. So I have to kind of set a precedence or whatever. So that's what's going on with Nineveh. Now Nineveh is an enemy of Israel. So that's one of the reasons why Jonah did not want to go there. Right. That was the issue. It not necessarily could no he didn't think Nineveh deserved any repentance. Well, he probably figured they didn't because he was they were an enemy. Enemies. So yeah. what God was telling Jonah to do was go into the go cross enemy lines mm -hmm. and try to bring them over to me. Right. That's what God was asking Jonah to do. And that's one of the reasons why Jonah like, nah, I'm no, nah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> He's like, I ain't going over there. I ain't doing that. The one it, it was one they don't deserve. They are in They always trying to pick on us. And, and it's funny because sometimes God will try to have you minister to people that was once your enemy. Yeah. God will have you minister to your enemies. And that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And, and, and trust me, I, I've been there as a pastor where you got to go pray for people that don't like you. <laughs> go to a hospital and visit somebody or you. go to a, a, a priest, somebody's funeral who said nothing negative things. It, Go to a preach at somebody's funeral who ain't ever said nothing but negative things about you, but you got to say positive things about them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, uh, if, if any pastor, Pastor Davis, probably, yeah, yeah that's the word. <laughs> Folk will trash you and talk about you. And as soon as you die, they want you to come to their funeral and talk about how good they were. How nice. No, Lord, thank God. So, <laughs> love him, Lord. Love him, Lord. He was a great person, man, whatever. And so, this is what's going on. Jonah, God is instructing Jonah, I need you to go mm -hmm. and speak to these folk. You already been through, you already been disobedient. I need you to get on track. So now Jonah is in Nineveh preaching. <laughs> All right. So Jonah began to enter the city. Verse four, the city of the first day's walk. And he cried out, saying, yet 40 days in, in Nineveh shall be overthrown. That was his sermon. I don't think he, he uh, and here's, <laughs> here's the thing, though, and we're going to get in chapter four. Sometimes I, I'm thinking about what he said. I don't, there was nothing in here on how to repent. He didn't even tell him to repent. Yeah, 40 days and never shall be overthrown. Y'all going to die. God's going to come in here and wipe everybody out. He ain't saying about, he ain't talking about God's love or whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yet 40 days. So, Understand the significance of 40 days. God was giving them 40 days because 40 is the number of preparation. So God was giving them time to prepare. Yeah. And if you are living today and you're watching this broadcast, you're watching us, and you're not connected or saved or under the cover of Jesus Christ, God is giving you time to prepare. Every time you woke up this morning outside of the salvation of Jesus Christ, he, he is allowing you to prepare. That's called grace. Yeah. So uh, Jonah's walking through the city preaching and saying, yet 40 days and none of us shall be overthrown. I'm letting y'all know in 40 days, God's going to kill all y'all. <laughs> Hellfire and brimstone preaching. No love message. No message. And and, and, and it's funny because when we get into chapter four, it, the chapter four would dictate the attitude of how he was preaching. And here's one thing we have to understand. Oh, uh, and oh, I don't want to get into it. I'm, I'm going to just kind of say it. I repeat it on Tuesday night. We have to be careful. Mm -hmm. That even when we're being obedient to God, the attitude we're doing it in. Amen? Mm -hmm. What's going on, Deacon Richards? Let me say that again. Uh, when Sometimes when we're still doing what God calls us to do, it's based on your attitude. For example, give me a prime example. I asked one of my kids to go get me a glass of water. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Because they're my kid, they should be obedient. But how many times you done ask your kid to go get something and they got an attitude? And come back without it. Or, or come back without it. But you know, they'll still do it. But when they come in here, next time, they, you know, they got something slick to say. So even though they were obedient, yeah. it was their attitude. 
Like, I ain't actually getting my water like that. Or they give you a half a glass with no ice. They give you water with no ice. <laughs> yeah. yeah or they, you know, because they have, because they don't really want to do it. Right. And I think right, this right. was this sermon, this sermon that Jonah was preaching. He was being obedient, but it was like, man, I really don't want to do this. Y'all finna die in 40 days. <laughs> oh, Lord. Or maybe, you know, some people need God's love. And then some people, you just got to get straight to the point. But but, but here's we the, ain't got the 40 days. We but, got time for you. No, know, but here's the thing. But this is all he said. Ritual. But we stick to the text. That's all he said. That's all he said. 40 days. But, that, but the thing is, gone. is that he didn't tell them to repent. He didn't, he didn't give them well, an avenue. Instructions, yeah. He just said, God, when we get to chapter 4, we're going to see why. But he just said, look, y'all going to die in 40 days. So, <laughs> so we came with you, and, and and I want to talk to pastors. Any pastors online? We have to be more intentional in our message to bring people to Christ. Yeah, we can't just tell folk they're going to hell. Yeah, you saying you're going to die. You're, you're going to die. The wages of sins of death. Yeah, that's scary. But don't tell them that the gift of God is eternal life. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? You can't. You can't. Uh, you can't give them one thing. And don't give them the whole thing. Oh, if you keep doing this, God going to send you to hell. But don't give them that if you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe God. So in other words, right. we got to give people the whole message. the whole picture. Yeah. We have become very abusive in our pulpits, and we have to be careful with that. And I'm, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm just saying in general, so I can put myself in that same. As pastors, we got to be better. I'm gonna this. What? Okay, I missed it. But so we have to be uh, better in right. what we're doing. Amen. Amen. So and and all Jehovah Jonah did for three days, yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Y'all gonna get jacked up and whooped. <laughs> so, verse five. But here's the thing: it was enough, and the word got around because he traveled three days preaching this, and he probably said some other stuff too. Yeah, he, he probably said some other. That but, that wasn't a whole. But I'm gonna tell you this: he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't speaking of God's grace. I can tell you that when we get to chapter four, he was not speaking on God's right. grace. He was just telling them what they can't do and what's going to happen to them. Oh, and that's the problem a lot of times in preaching. We're always telling people what God is going to do to them negatively, right. and never talk about God's grace. Yeah. And I think we got to get away from that. We got to get away from. Well, if you do this, you're going to hell. You do. You're going to hell. God's going to have judgment on you. But we don't never tell them about God's grace. Yeah. You have to, so don't let's not continue to preach about what people can't do. Let's preach about what God said they can do. Instead of always trying to throw people under the kill people in the church, let's give them empowerment. Let them leave church with some hope. Yeah, hope. Uh, so look what happened. So verse five. So the people that never believed God proclaimed a fast and put on a sackcloth from the greatest to the least. So basically, the people are like, hey man, we we ain't trying to die. Mm -mm. Now here's the thing. And here's where we got to be careful. Now, the it's good that they're recognizing it and they're fasting. Right. But the question I, I wish I could ask and I wish I was there was, was they making a decision out of love for God or for, out of fear from going to hell, being destroyed? Right. And that's where we when, we, when we're ministering to people and preaching to people that we don't want people, I don't believe God wants people to change due to fear. Now, this is Old Testament. God did not play. But now with Jesus' grace and mercy, we do not have to transition people with fear. With fear, yeah. We don't have to do that anymore because of God, Jesus. Now, now in the Old Testament, yes. But since the New Testament and Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we do not have to create a, a, a level of fear to get people to repent and, and turn to God. Right. So they, they proclaim a fast. They got a fast. They put on sackcloth. Sackcloth was a, uh, a material that they wore uh to show humility and submission. Mm -hmm. They would put sackcloth and ashes. You put sackcloth on, you were depressed, somebody died, uh, but, it, but it was also a level of submission and humility. But then the word came to the king of Nineveh. This is what I love about this. And he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. He did the same thing. And he caused it to proclaim to publish throughout the Nineveh by the creator of the king and his noble saint. So now, not only the word got to the people, Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why it became more impactful when the word got to the leader. Y'all, whether it's general, your family, whether it's your church, it hits different when that word, when the leader yeah, listens, falls in, line. Yeah. falls in line with the word of God. Yeah. It is hard for 
a generation or a church or a business or whatever to change if the leader refuses to change. Yeah. Hey, good morning, Sister Carolyn. I see you. Uh, and because the leader refuses to change, mm -hmm. the head of the house yes. refuses to change, it makes it difficult. Because in order for people to, some people are following certain people to get to Christ, whether it's your pastor, whether it's your husband or, or your grandmother, whoever, there has to be some change in the leadership. And if the, lead, and the, and if the leadership is not sensitive to the spirit of God and the word of God, yeah. then everything around it is not going to work. Even when people are trying to do the right thing, it is not going to work. What is your advice to that, Pastor? Get out of places where leaders are not connected to God or you'll be destroyed with them. Ooh. And I'm talking about spiritually. And, and, mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Let me say that again. If you got leadership that is not being sensitive and following the word of God, get out of there so you won't be destroyed spiritually, physically, or whatever. Because right. God is going to be bring destruction and curse to that place. Mm -hmm. and, and if they're not listening to the word, they're going to have problems. But praise be to God. Yeah. This king responded. This king responded because this leader, uh, you're learning about this leader, he cared about his people. Yeah. He cared, okay, he cared about his kingdom. Wait a minute, I, we need to change. As much as he hated Israel, this man, the Hebrew, who came into preaching whatever that God is going to destroy us. And mind you, these were idol worshipers. Yeah. Ooh, these were idol worshipers, y'all. Worship idol gods. These were idol worshipers. And and so now he 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 said, "Listen, we're gonna we're gonna set some things straight." He said, "Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink." So what he did was he uh, created a corporate fast, what we call a corporate fast. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. So in other words, we're gonna stop killing people and whooping people. None of them didn't have the issue. Of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were just evil people, did evil things, fought and, and tried to whoop people and kill everybody. They were trying to, because they they, do, they dominated. Because you got to remember, Nimrod was all about war. You got you got to read about. If you get a chance, read that story of Nimrod and and the Tower of Babel and all that stuff. Uh, who can tell if God will turn him relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? He said, "Listen, we got to do what we got to do so God don't destroy us." Because one thing this king do realize, even though this king may not, may worship idol gods, but I can promise you this, this king know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. This king probably know history. Yeah. <laughs> what, did they, what did they say? Sinners have souls too. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> and, they, and they got common sense. Yeah. They know what happened. I know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah years ago. I heard about that. I heard it. So there's a possibility that could happen here. Mm -hmm. Also, this king understood that as powerful as Nineveh was, the only kingdom they could not overtake was Israel mm -hmm. because it was protected by God. So here's the thing. One thing I've learned and, and, and as a pastor and learned in, in being a Christian, a lot of sinners know who God is. Absolutely. Don't ever think they don't know who God is. They just have to accept that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, but they understand who God is. Don't don't some of them know God in the Bible more than many of us Christians. Uh, yeah, God, God gives you them second chance. So they decide, listen. We're going to fast, we're going to pray, and we're going to turn. Well, not only are we going to fast, we're going to turn fast. from our wicked ways. Mm -hmm. It goes together. Somebody posted on Facebook that if you're fasting and you're still cussing people out and doing everything, <laughs> you might as well go ahead and eat. Let's go ahead and eat. Go ahead and eat. Because yeah. fasting, yeah. if you're going to fast, it also comes with turning from, you cannot fast. I'm going to fast to the Lord so he can bless me, but you're still living wickedly. Right. Ain't gonna work. So you gotta add that. He said, "Listen, not only are we gonna fast." He said, "The animals, the animals ain't did nothing. Nobody, said, everybody, everybody, ain't nobody eating nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> ain't nobody eating nothing." This was a real corporate fast. Even the he said, "Look, and the beast won't be covered in clothes. He putting clothes on animals. See, the, see, Ronald the Sledge was the first one putting that clothes on our dog. <laughs> you know, some of y'all put clothes on y'all dogs and y'all cats That's and stuff. Right. So that was going on with in the Bible, y'all. Yeah, okay. People put the clothes on their animals before then. <laughs> so that's a joke, y'all. <laughs> but um <laughs> so now they're repenting, man. They like listen, man. We 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 not they living got like the this. message. They got the message. But this is what I love about God. Mm. His word 
will not only to change you, but the word will change him. Yeah. Ooh, because one thing I know about God, God will not go against his word. Mm -hmm. He's not a man that he will lie. Oh, thank you, Lord. He will not go against your word. What, what, what came to me was, this what happened in verse 10. And God saw their works and they turned away from their evil way. And God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. This 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 verse reminded me of, it, it reminded me of, let me pull it up right now. So I don't want to misquote it. It reminded me of 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. It said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and listen, and turn from their wicked ways. See, some of us are praying, but not turning away from my wicked ways. Mm -hmm. Then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. That's awesome. Yeah. And you might be saying, well, none of us, they weren't his people. He created them. Everybody belongs to God. Yeah. Let's be clear about that. The, the people of Israel were God's chosen people, but everybody belongs to God. Sinners and saved people. Yeah. We belong to God. He's, he's our creator. Everything on earth belongs to God. And he said they humbled themselves. And that's what they did. They put on sackcloth. Right. They put on sackcloth, humbled themselves, and they prayed. And they seek God. And they turn, and the most important part, they turn from their wicked ways. Mm -hmm. It's a formula. It's a form. Yeah, you, can, you can't but, do just one. He told you how to do it. Humble yourself. Pray. Seek my face. Then turn from your wicked ways. And then what he said, this equals, then I will hear you from heaven. So you got to do all of that. You got to do all of it. Can't you got to do all of it. Can't do a piece of it. Yeah, you got to humble Some yourself. Some people say, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm but, praying. But what else are you doing? Did you humble yourself? You can't pray and ask God to help your situation, then you cuss everybody out the next day. <laughs> we can't do that. You Look, kingdom character matters. Right, right, right. So if you want God to change and heal your situation, if you want God not to condemn your situation, you have to actively do humble yourself, pray, seek God, and turn from your ways. The problem is that, like you said, it's a formula. We, in, you, in, uh, H2O is water. Right. If you take the O out, it's not water anymore. Right. If you take the two out, two out one, of the, one of the oxygens is out, or hydrogen, whatever it is, you, you, it's not water anymore. Yeah. So what I'm saying, there's a formula. Yeah, and that's, that's many times. Guys, people, we try to pick out what we want to do. So I'll pray, but I'm not going to do this. Well, I'll do this, but I'm not going to do that. And and you have to do it all mm -hmm. if you want to get the results that you what you need. Yeah. So God, in his mercy, relented from the disaster that he said he was going to do. Mm -hmm. And he did not do it because he saw the people generally humbled themselves and wanted to change. Right. So he decided. So, yes, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. Eternal life. It's eternal life. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. God may want to destroy you. He should have <laughs> destroyed you. Should have. But because of his grace. Yeah, mercy. And here's the thing. And you're maybe saying, well, he ain't destroyed me yet. And I'm living like that because he's, he's giving me time to prepare. But one thing I will do know, grace does run out. Eventually. Grace runs out. Yeah. Um, and my grace isn't your grace. Some people live 60 years. Some people live 40 years. Some people live 20 years. Right. So, you know, I wouldn't gamble with my grace. And <laughs> and uh, and I, I meant to look up this scripture. Um. Uh, Give me one second. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Oh, oh, it's great. It's a great. All right. And Matthew 12, Matthew 12, verses 39 to 41. Jesus mentions Ninevites and he mentions their repentance when he's dealing with the Pharisees mm -hmm. because the Pharisees were adamant of not accepting Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And what jo Jesus is great, he's the son of God, mm -hmm. greater than Jonah. And Jesus had to make a point that these folk in Nineveh, who a preacher that really was not known, they repented. Right. But the people in the church won't. Mm. That's that's a base story. That heathens and <laughs> yes, idol worshippers <laughs> had enough sense to repent. Yeah. But folk in the church are mm -hmm. hard headed. Come on, y'all. Yeah, we're gonna face a, a, a as a church and as a believe body believe we're gonna face some judgment. That's why our churches are not growing. That's why we're not being prosperous in our lives 
because you're thinking we got God, but you're not living right and you wonder why you're struggling. Like God is not hearing me. Or why is God putting more? I love it. You know, why, why God is putting all this on me? Man, you're putting this on yourself. Yeah. You are putting this on yourself. Quit blaming God for your problems. God must be using me uh, as a servant to, to <laughs> suffer. Man, you suffering because of your disobedience. Yeah. Let's be honest. That's all I'm saying. All I'm asking you is when you look at your bad circumstance, look at your bad situation, be honest. Are you really doing what God asked you to do? Right. Or are you, like somebody said earlier, are you sidestepping? Are you trying to halfway do the formula? On the fence. You on the fence, and you and and, and so listen, and then you want everybody. You go on Facebook or whatever, want everybody betray like you're you're this uh, victim for God. I'm, or I feel like Job. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Job. Jesus. Job had did not participate in his demise. That was something that God set up to call Job yeah. to do something great and and show that the devil that you can't have him. No, you're not going through what Job going. Through. You're going through what you're going through because of you. <laughs> yeah, people want to talk about that. You wow. and, and 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 if you like I said, if you and if you want to be healed, if you want to be straight, you gotta go to Second Chronicles 7 and 14. Yeah. Pray, humble yourself, pray, seek his face, turn from your wicked ways. Mm -hmm. Then God will heal yeah. your land. And I'm a living testimony. Until I did that myself, until I tried that, yeah. Not saying I'm perfect, not saying uh we don't make mistakes. Absolutely. But he said wicked ways yeah y'all get what i'm saying we make mistakes we we're not perfect but some of us are just living in wickedness mm -hmm. and you need to humble yourself you need to be like the ninevites and get 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 right you got anything you want to add to it up mm -mm, i think you summed it up perfectly yeah so yeah. uh listen listen i'm done we're gonna get into chapter four i kind of gave hint to chapter four chapter four will be good too because we're gonna find out how honorary and arrogant jonah was and, and 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 one thing I want to talk about is on Tuesday night, and I'm letting you hear how sometimes the church can have the same attitude as Jonah. Mm. How church folk can have the same attitude as Jonah, even in your obedience, it's you still got a bad attitude. Yeah, you still got a bad attitude. <laughs> what you? I'm being obedient. No, you know what I just thought about the mm. ushers at the front door. Mm. <laughs> ushers at the front door. You running the folks away from church because you open it up. Good morning. Sit right here. Oh, or those folks oh, 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 folk that's in the choir. Well, I don't want to say that. I sang it, but I don't really want to sing it. You got a nasty like, like, face you, up there. Yeah. I was like, I can't get into you this being, song. I was obedient. No, you was obedient, but your attitude stuck when nah, you No, but you remember that song, Smile. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. Well, you know, church sings smile, smile. Like Kirk Franklin. Yeah. You, you sing Even the song smile, but you ain't smile. <laughs> smile. <laughs> what? You look so much better when you smile. <laughs> like, what, like you up there looking ugly and you ain't even smiling. Right. You, yeah. You know, obey his will and he's doing with some. Yeah, you sing a smile, but you up there mad. <laughs> yeah, you mad. <laughs> You mad because they don't smile. And y'all yeah. know that's true. Y'all know that's true, yeah. man. Both be singing songs like, what? Yeah, them ushers. I yeah. go in the church and them ushers sit right there. I'm, I ain't coming you back. You singing like, this morning <laughs> when I rolled, I didn't have no doubt, but you sleep in church. You're like, I thought they rolled. <laughs> <laughs> no, let us stop, okay, man. Okay. <laughs> it's the truth, though. I this mean, morning when I rolled, you went right to sleep after you got done singing. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> we going to talk about that, man. But listen, uh, look, we don't, oh, uh, it's good to laugh, man, and joke, man. I'm about to say, stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah. we love the church, though. We, 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 we got to get better. But um, listen, we don't want to assume that everybody knows the Lord. We want to uh, give this invitation that if uh, if you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe God raised him from the dead, the Bible said you, you shall, shall be, be saved. saved. Yes. Amen. Uh, secondly, Maybe you don't have a church home. We'd love to be a part of it. Send me an inbox. Send me a message. We'd love you to be a part of the Moo Church. You can come out. We're, we're in church first, third, fifth Sunday. We're at Sycamore Park Elementary School, 9 o'clock. Uh, we would love for you to be a part of our church, be a part of what we're doing. Just to be honest with you, when you become a part of the Moo Church or you become a disciple, a partner with us, we don't, we're don't. we not about that foolishness. We're about teaching people the word of God. If, uh, I, I call it the 80-20 uh, uh, rule. In other words, 80% of our ministry is community. 
uh, outreach, trying to do something in the neighborhood. 20% of it is church. Right. Where that, so what I'm saying is we have church, but our whole focus is not on the church building and the church thing. Our focus is have helping help people, people and how we help people do outreach. 80 20. That's our rule. We the 80 20. 80% 80 community, 20% church. But guess what? 100% God. 100% God. Uh, so uh, we would love for you to be a part of our ministry, be a part of our thing. Lastly, if you'd like to sow a seed, tithe, or give into our ministry, you can do that at our cash app, a dollar sign got to move, dollar sign got to move, or P.O. Box 2022, Cold Pepper, Virginia, 22701. We'll see you Tuesday night. Listen, yes. share this, share, 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 share. Uh, if you're looking at me right now, hit the button, hit the share button. <laughs> right now, we want to get this out to as many people because we yes. want people to be connected and hear the word of God in a rich way. Listen, y'all be blessed. You got anything, EP? No, I'll talk to you guys on Tuesday. All right, God bless you. Love you. Oh, let's pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you. Uh, we ask you to cover everyone that has showed up tonight. Those who are not on here tonight, we ask you to continue to cover their blessing and bless them as they go on in their coming, Father God. Lord, we look forward to sharing this word and closing out this series on Tuesday night. Thank you for the power and your vision. In Jesus' yeah, name, Jesus amen. Name. Amen.